Earth. This is how it looked like 500 years ago. We all knew it. The Earth was flat. Galileo Galilei and Leonardo da Vinci suggested that the Earth was round. We all laughed but found out later that they were right. So we have been wrong before. Is it possible that there's something we know today that may not be true? The Great Pyramid of Giza. This magnificent structure is the only one of the original seven wonders that still stands today. It's as tall as the 42-story building and contains 2.3 million pieces of stone, somewhere as much as 50 ton. The blocks had different sizes and shapes, which made it stay intact through earthquakes that flattened everything around it. So what was its function and why was it built? We all know the story. Thousands of Egyptian slaves moved huge blocks of stones to feed the greedy pharaoh and to build this tomb. But there are some problems with this theory. Archaeologists have claimed that it took 20 years to build the pyramids. It had to have been built in that short amount of time because it was built to be Kiev's tomb. If they worked 12 hour shifts, 365 days a year, they had to carve, move, lift and fit one block every two and a half minutes using only these tools. Rocks, chisels and hemp ropes. This is so amazing that we have to wonder, was it even possible? No mummies, hieroglyphs or treasures were found in the Pyramid of Giza. Not even when the pyramid was completely sealed. There are some pyramids that we know was built as tombs, but these pyramids had another construction. The pyramid and the stones were smaller and it was built in a more recent time period. These pyramids were highly decorated, with names of the occupant. The Great Pyramid lacks even a single marking, so if the Pyramid of Giza wasn't a tomb, what was its function and why? was built. When we look at the geometry and the math behind the Great Pyramid, amazing numbers appear. If you take the pyramid's length minus the height, you will get 100 times pi. If you divide the length by the height, you get pi. Draw two circles, one inside and one outside the base of the pyramid. If you take the length of the inside circle, subtract it from the length of the outer circle get the speed of light. If you look inside the pyramid, the length of the king's chamber in meters is 10 times pi. Minus this side, it's 10 times the golden number square. The Great Pyramid is lined up precisely with the magnetic north and stands exactly at the center of the largest landmass on the planet. So, what was its function? You would think that with today's technology that we could explain the pyramids, but we can't. It doesn't make sense to our logic. Is it possible that the ancients was even smarter than us? When we look at the culture that built the pyramids, they were brilliant engineers. A lot of engineers say that we can't build the Great Pyramid today and it was built to the precision of a machine. If it was built like a machine, perhaps it functions like one. There is a theory that the pyramids were some kind of power plant conducting electricity. This may sound crazy at first, but if you take a look at the stones in the pyramid, they had different qualities. Stone blocks used inside the pyramid were made of one type of limestone called dolomite and is an extremely high electrical conductor. The stone blocks used outside the pyramid were made of another type of limestone that has a high insulating property. They were so tightly built that the razor blade could not fit between the blocks. The shafts were made out of granite and works like a conductor, but granite is also radioactive. It will ionize and electrify the air inside the shafts. What you got here is a situation with a highly electrical conductive core wrapped in a very good insulator. When we look at the insulation in an electric cable, we see that conductive insulated material is used in the same way as in the pyramids. However, a source of energy is needed for electricity generation. The Giza Plateau, where the pyramid stands, is full of underground water channels called aquifers. 
Water flows through the aquifers as rain falls or when rivers or lakes flood. The water drains into them. Movements of water through aquifers are known to produce an electric current. This electric current is conducted directly to the pyramids. Is it possible that this method could work? Nikola Tesla, an inventor of electric technology in the early 1900s, used an identical form of this technology. He was successful in transmitting sound and pitches between continents in the Warncliffe Tower with wireless power technology. Tesla had also built this tower above an aquifer, and it's identical to the electromagnetic field set up in the construction of the pyramids. The energy, the great free wireless energy, has always existed on our planet. There are lots of theories about the pyramids, and we still don't know for sure what their function was. So, why aren't we researching and investigating more? In recent years, a 20-mile wall, 14 feet high, was installed around the site of Giza Plateau. At night, there are about 100 guards patrolling the pyramids. Applications for investigating academic research are almost all routinely rejected. Why is access and legitimate scientific research being systematically restricted? Unlike in times past, tourists are now being restricted to take photographs in the Egyptian museums. Much of ancient Egypt remains undiscovered. Satellite pictures show traces of buried structures that are still not excavated. In the name of protecting sites, are Egyptian authorities preventing us from learning the truth about our ancient past?